Hi there, I'm Andreas Marazis, researcher and project manager at the European Neighborhood Council, and this is the ANC Dev Podcast. Today's uh, uh, in-depth discussion is part of a series of podcasts linked to our Beyond Erasmus, education, exchanges, and employment opportunities for youth in the EU and Turkey. The project is supported by Friedrich Naumann Stiftung in Turkey and aims at promoting student mobility beyond the Erasmus Plus framework, youth exchanges, internships, training courses, networking, access to, find, to funding for small and medium enterprises, and several other things. Today's discussion is the second part of a podcast dedicated to access to funding opportunities for youth from Turkey and Europe who are still enrolled in a bachelor's or master's program. We have the pleasure to virtually have with us today Mr. Bernard Brunet, who is the head of unit for Turkey at DigiNear. Bernard, welcome to the ANC Dev podcast. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much and welcome uh, indeed. Uh, and thank you for giving the opportunity to, to speak today. The pleasure is all mine. And uh, uh, our discussion will be based pretty much on what it was already mentioned during the online session that you participated uh, as part of the project. So let me get uh, uh, straight to the first question. Um, now, I would like to start by asking you how you think the current political situation has hindered, if at all, funding opportunities for youth from Europe and Turkey. Is the political environment discouraging for young people, you think? Well, it's clear. I mean, it's um, uh, one of the uh, key uh, political directions of our relations between Turkey and the European Union uh, in recent years, despite all the, let's say, the difficulties, has been the willingness to maintain people-to-people -people exchanges. And therefore, um, there has been, um, let's say, no significant consequences, negative consequences on the availability uh, of funding uh, from the EU for, uh, let's say, for uh, opportunities for exchanging among youth and, uh, and other professionals. We have maintained um, actually the access to the, uh, to the main EU programs uh, like Erasmus, uh, or also the, the Jean Monnet Scholarship Program, which is uh, funded uh, uh, in Turkey by the Instrument for Free Accession Assistance. We have also uh, increased uh, actually the funding for a civil society organization, which include in some, in some cases some, uh, some possibilities for uh, uh, exchanges and working more with the, with the European Union. And um, in addition to not only maintaining this access and this level of funding, we have also just uh, three weeks ago, we confirmed uh, uh, Turkey's accession to the next generation of EU programs on, uh, um, on, on mobility like Erasmus, Horizon Europe and uh, the European Solidarity Corp. There were uh, the association agreements for Turkey to join to these three programs were signed in Brussels on the 27th of October. So clearly demonstrating that despite the complicated um, at times complicated the political environment, the European Union wants to continue to prioritize uh, people to people exchanges and giving opportunities for young people uh, to learn, travel and work in, uh, in the context of EU projects. This is indeed quite positive and uh, uh, not only me, but I guess others in my position are, would be pleased to hear that uh, uh, at least at the academic level or civil society level or um, uh, young uh, uh, students, uh, young civil society representatives and academics are still uh, able to travel and utilize the resources available for them. Now, uh, I would be interested to find out, I mean, given the current political situation, definitely, despite the fact that funding is still available for uh, Turkey, there are some areas that are maybe easier, if I may use this term, to, to focus, uh, whether you are uh, a partner based in the EU or a partner based in Turkey. So I would like to, to hear your thoughts like on which areas consider of mutual interest and let's say safe or less risky for European and Turkish youth to work in. Well, there is um, there are actually quite a lot of areas where there is a scope for uh, great cooperation uh, between uh, Turkish and um, EU uh, people and or EU academics or uh, students or entrepreneurs. 
I think it's clear, for example, that uh, the area of uh, the Green Deal uh, is, is an, and everything linked to sustainable development is, is very important uh, and very relevant. And there, there is going to be an increased focus within the various EU programs like Horizon or Erasmus uh, to work on, the, on these areas. Um, and this includes uh, not only the research uh, element, but also in terms of skills development, in terms of innovation, in terms of uh, um, uh, research, in terms of uh, 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 creating uh, um, research programs, also on on all the aspects linked to the you know to the transformation of of the economies and societies. So. I think that's that's a, a clear priority for um, uh, for the European Union, and I know that it's a, it's an important priority for uh, uh, for Turkey also, which has ratified the Paris Agreement recently and and prepared its own national uh, green deal action plan. I think that that is clearly one area where there is a lot of uh, mutual interest. Another area of uh, very uh, important mutual interest, I think, is is everything linked to culture. Um, where there is uh, also strong interest on both sides um, to, you know, to work on the um, and to exchange on, on, on cultural, not only, for example, cultural heritage, but also, uh, you know, the exchanges of artists, uh, promotion of, uh, of um, mutual exchanges on, on everything related to, to, uh, to culture. So that's a, a second area where I think there is a lot of uh, interest. Um, there's also um, uh, a lot of interest also when it comes to uh, the protection of uh, the environment. This is, a, of course, you know, linked, but not necessarily completely uh, similar to the Green Deal. And uh, uh, we've seen that, you know, with the recent, um, let's say, uh, uh, important climatic uh, events in Turkey, the wildfires and the, and the floods, that there is there's more interest on both sides to work on, uh, on, on, the, on the protection of uh, the environment and also on, on biodiversity. So that, that I think is also very important. And maybe the last uh, uh, issue that I would like to highlight is, is, which is maybe more specific, but still quite relevant and interesting is, is the area of health. Uh, clearly the COVID uh, uh, pandemic has had a, you know, a, a kind of a strong impulse for uh, developing our cooperation. But we find that there is uh, actually quite a lot of uh, areas where, we, where there is scope for increased cooperation between, um, uh, between uh, Turkey and the European Union, uh, be it, for example, on, you know, on exchanging among the hospitals or, or health professionals or uh, researchers on issues like cancer or uh, microbiological resistance or uh, epidemic control. There's a whole range of issues that are uh, of interest to professionals, academics, and, and young people. If I may, Bernard, I would like to maybe uh, have a supplementary question on that one. And it might sound a little bit too basic, but okay, for civil society or for experts like yourself, uh, it's like something that is a common knowledge, but for young people, it's not necessarily like uh, uh, something that they know. Uh, in these key areas that you mentioned, health, climate, and others, if someone like a beginner who is like just came out from university or is a young researcher, a young civil society representative, would like to focus in these key areas and want to cooperate with either European or Turkish partners in Turkey. Um, where he or she can actually uh, apply for grants, for funds from the EU, especially. Just a, a few, like just directions, like which websites or which categories? Well, they are essentially um, under, under the let's say, the programs managed by the Commission in Brussels, the big programs like Erasmus or Horizon Europe or the European Solidarity Corp. Uh, all, all the types of e big EU programs, they are, they are managed directly by, um, by the Commission in Brussels, and there are uh, specific websites uh, which are uh, providing all the information that needs to be, I mean, that could be of interest to the uh, to, to students. Uh, the main, uh, let's say, one of the main uh, entry point is the, is the website of the Executive Agency for Education uh, and culture. I think the um, you know the www.eaceea.eu 
I think there, uh, this is, you know, the, 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 the main um, executive agency of the commission, which is implementing the Erasmus program and, uh, and uh, Creative Europe and the European, European Solidarity Corps. So that's, I think, the main portal for, for where to find uh, information and where to, look for, uh, where to look for the calls for expression of interest. And then for people in Turkey that want to benefit from the, let's say, the programs that are, uh, let's say, managed by the EU delegation in Ankara, like, you know, the Jean Monnet scholarships for uh, EU studies, um, then the, the, the entry point is the uh, website of the EU delegation in Ankara. And I think it's, 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 a, it's quite easy to find it in the, on the internet. And there you have all the relevant information for uh, upcoming calls for, um, for applications. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned one uh, uh, Creative Europe. I think Creative Europe is more on the cultural uh, part, right? Indeed. Creative Europe is, is more for uh, uh, creative industry, I mean, for cultural and, uh, and also um it's a creative industries and it, it also linked to the information and society uh where there is a lot of uh, from the media side where there is a lot of uh, uh, possibilities also for the time being this program is not yet open for um for the participation of turkey we are still negotiating for mm -hmm. turkey's participation but for erasmus and um and horizon and um and the european european solidarity corps i think you there is already uh, possibilities Perfect. Thank you for the clarification, Bernard. Um, now, if you may ask someone who, as I said, like as a, coming from Turkey or Europe, uh, is a young uh, individual researcher or a uh, recent graduate who would like to work on projects related to Turkey, EU cooperation and so on. What would you advise that person to focus on when it comes to working, you know, with European or Turkish counterpart? Uh, just like maybe uh, some tips, like some bullet points on what one should take into consideration before engaging. Well, it, it really depends on um, on where people are standing in their profession or in their academic or professional um, career. Um, but um, I think it's um, you know it's it's one one thing that is really important first is is to invest a bit of time in terms of um, getting to know how to apply and getting to know the procedures because uh, it is I mean there's a lot of funding available but there is also an element of complexity and there's quite a lot of uh, some paperwork to, to to be done so I think it's it's important to to get to know uh, the rules very well and to and to ask around and to find out on the you know in the various social networks and and the other uh, sites that uh, on the internet what are the experience of others in terms of preparing uh, uh, one's applications for um, uh, you know for eu funding under either the scholarships or um, um, or other types of programs um, so I think you know invest a little, bit, a little bit of time ahead to understand what is required because the, the requirements are 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 can be can be important. Um, when it, if if it's you know more in terms of uh, an organization or uh, an NGO, I think it's um, it it requires also to to be sure that uh, when replying you comply with the with the terms of reference and you you really provide. Uh, a project that um, that is uh, let's say in the frame of the terms of references or in the terms of the call for expression of interest i think it, it is very important that uh, we see too many projects you know interesting projects but not complying with the, the main purpose of of the call so uh, respect the let's say the objective that uh, we we are trying to set out uh, be innovative i think it's always um, uh, interesting to uh, uh, to bring fresh ideas and in particular also um, uh, um, let's say fresh implementation modalities and fresh uh, ways of engaging with um, with um, uh, with other stakeholders uh, i think it's it's good to have uh, uh, networks um, when uh, especially for ngo that are replying to calls uh, the more you have um, uh, partners uh, it can be it can be something that uh, is is of an added value but it needs to be well documented and 
be sure that uh, all the partners are eligible. Um, yeah, and make sure that uh, in your presentation for your application, uh, for your project, I think you need to have you know good, good uh, and synthetic and clear, clear information and presentation of your of your project. I think the visualization is uh, is uh, is really important and um, makes the clearer your ideas are appearing, the 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 higher the chances that you will you will be selected. That's what I would say at this point. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, I would also like to, you know, uh, support what you just said about, like, uh, among other things, the, the existence of, like, strong networks, because that's what we're trying to achieve through this program. We're trying to, the Beyond Erasmus, like, itself is, like, uh, whatever links and bonds uh, uh, young people have created through uh, the excellent instrument of Erasmus+, Plus, we strongly believe uh, that we need to retain that and actually cultivate it uh, and go a step further and uh, through training programs or fellowships cultivate these exchanges and actually build networks uh, at the different levels as well not only at the academic level but also at the ngo or uh, at the eu policy level depending on like uh, everyone's interest not everyone is interested in working in civil society or in political uh, uh, or international relations so we have like participants who are interested in uh, issues related to uh, renewable energy or uh, tourism and so on. So I think that these kind of uh, exchanges are quite useful. So uh, at this point, uh, Bernard, uh, our brief uh, uh, podcast uh, discussion uh, has come to an end. I would like once again to take the opportunity to thank you for being virtually available once again uh, with us, uh, for always being actually available for our programs and for sharing your views and comments. It was really a pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much also for giving me the opportunity. It was a pleasure. The next uh, in-depth podcast is dedicated uh, on uh, the future of economy and entertainment with Gi Giuseppe Purcaro and Cristina Mercuriadi. So stay tuned. I'm Andreas Marazis, and that was the ENC in Depth podcast.